Are you worried? Are you concerned? Yes, I think we are all concerned. It has definitely been bigger than anybody expected. Uh, the way it's working here is that the women are coming out of the balcony, yelling a new rumor every few minutes, and the men on the street are walking around and again yelling new rumors every minute. We have lost possibly we have lost all sense of what is true and what is not. And so right now it is almost 11 p.m. in Cairo, and all the civilian forces on the street are going to get worn out in a couple of hours, by most couple of hours. So we're not sure how it's going to be overnight. Of course, the uh, announcement from the military is that they will now deploy more troops uh, across the country. Uh, that may help in the short term, but in the long term, I presume people in your area want to see a conclusion to what's going on uh, across Cairo and Egypt. A few hours ago on the national TV, it said that the army was deployed and heading towards Heliopolis the area where the presidential palace is and so that was a few hours ago and then nothing happened we haven't seen any army cars we have heard accounts that army cars were indeed in some areas in heliopolis but i personally live on a main street and if they haven't come past here then there aren't that many of them and these are middle-aged people who did not start the protest they probably did not take part in the protest and they find themselves forced to take part right now by having to go down on the street it's an incredibly uh, difficult position if you're, uh, as you say, uh, middle-aged and without security. So what's the main concern within the area? If, even if you have formed sort of mini-militias, uh, you, uh, are, you, are you concerned that you will have to maintain the sort of self-security for the time being? I think there are two main concerns. The first concern is how are we going to make it through the night and what will happen and when will more forces come to our aid. And we've obviously experienced in the last few days how that doesn't happen. And so this is the main concern. The other concern is everybody is wearing those, those civilian forces returning to their own mobs because they are very threatened, they are very tense. And there's a fear that they will break into violence because they stop any minivan passing by the street and they question it almost like they are their own police. Mm. And that's another thing we're worried about, that when they get worn out, it will break into violence. How concerned are you that you would like to see a resolution to the, certainly the protests that are continuing in Tahrir Square and across the country, and that you want a resolution to the political impasse, uh, and certainly the civilian social impasse that your country is experiencing? If I was to reflect what I think the families are feeling in my revolution or the protests to end, and there are people from both sides of the spectrum, but in all cases they want it resolved as soon as possible. They are scared and they don't, they haven't seen anything like this before. Well, and so every hour they change, they change their opinions, every hour they're more scared, and the night hours are very difficult for them. Well, thank you, uh, No Morgan, there for joining us from Heliopolis. Really appreciate you uh, giving us a sense of what it must be like for you in a very difficult situation. These are live pictures uh, from central Cairo. Of course, the building in the distance that you see on fire is the Press Supreme Council building. Uh, we had thought it was, again, the NDB building, which had been gutted just a, a night earlier, but we're just correcting ourselves here, uh, that that is, in fact, the Press Supreme Council building. It's very close to the ruling party's headquarters, which were gutted 24 hours ago, and it's also worryingly very close to the National Museum, which holds many of Egypt's uh, uh, ancient artifacts uh, and certainly uh, the security forces want to make sure that they can put that fire out so it doesn't spread. Well, joining me now live on the line from downtown Cairo is Ali Abdul Wahab. He's a resident of Zamalek, an affluent neighbourhood of the capital. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Wahab. Please just tell us what the situation is like where you are. We're hearing that certain residences or residencies are forming their own militias. And that's exactly what we've done here as well. We've created our own sort of residence protection committee and we've set up roadblocks and um, unless we're fairly certain uh, that it's safe to let a particular vehicle or a particular person through, then we simply will not let them through. When did, what sort of, I mean, when did you decide that the only option was to form this sort of militia? Uh, what was the turning point for you? Um, well, the fact that there is no security presence in the streets whatsoever, and we were hearing a lot of rumours of, uh, of looting going on, particularly in the neighbouring behind-the-scene area. 
and uh, it's quite clear that the the um, the, situ the security situation in the country is in free fall. Tell me what your actual militia consists of and how you're actually physically defending yourselves. Are we looking at sticks and, and rods, or do oh, people no, have we're, guns? We're, we're, we're pretty well, we're, we're, some of us are fairly well armed. We have shotguns and, and we have small arms. And, of course, sticks, and I, and I have an old cricket bat, actually. Of course. Um, we, we, saw, um, we are seeing some uh, latest pictures from Egyptian TV uh, where some uh, of the security forces have managed to arrest individuals that they were suspicious of. Uh, not quite sure who these individuals are. Uh, but there is a suggestion, and it was made by a previous speaker to Al Jazeera, that uh, it's either prisoners released from their prison who have escaped or the police force who have gone back into civilian clothing and are terrorising the local community. I mean, what's your impression of who these individuals might be? Well, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't actually seen any of these people yet, but, but sort of assessing the situation, I think it's a combination of both. Plus the fact that we've received, we received news from local Egyptian television that some parts of Zamalek were being looted, and it simply wasn't true. I think the government is guilty of spreading misinformation. I think they have, they, they, the current regime is, try, is trying to validate that it is the only option for the rule of this country. And frankly, he has to go. The pictures we're seeing, I think, are of could all have been resolved days ago, but this man just will not let go. And so this is his generation. This is the generation he has created. Undereducated, poor, and they are the one. If they're the ones doing the looting, it's his fault. I do not blame them. And you're not appeased then by the appointment of the vice president or the new prime minister? Absolutely not. Nor, nor any of the residences here. So, what do you think the this end? Is just, this is just. This is this is musical chairs, isn't it? Well, this, how, do you think, how do you think this is going to actually play out then? Because uh, as the well, news filters out over, as the news filters, as the news filters out, obviously uh, throughout the evening to those people that may not quite know that there's a new uh, VP and a prime minister, uh, they are certainly going to know by the morning, and, and it's quite obvious that people, certainly in, in Cairo, are not observing any of the rules and regulations that the authorities would like, i.e., the curfew. Uh, um, that, that is absolutely true. I don't think it's going to appease people, to tell you the truth. Even though, as you said, we come from a fairly uh, affluent part of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Cairo, we all concur. Every single person concurs that the, that the main reason that we are in the situation we are in is the stubbornness of an 82-year-old man. Well, Mr. Ali Abdul Wahab, thanks very much for joining us. Really appreciate your comments and your experiences there, and have a safe night. Let's join our, our correspondent, Eamon Mohadeen, who's in Cairo. Uh, Eamon, we're seeing pictures, uh, we believe, of suspects arrested in Alexandria, lined up against a wall, uh, possibly uh, some of the thugs uh, that uh, the authorities are talking about or local people are talking about. I don't know if you can see these pictures, uh, but an interesting development that state television is broadcasting them. Uh, yes, I mean, I, unfortunately, I cannot see those specific images where I am, but yes, it is something that the government here, at least the Ministry of Defense in their statement today, called on citizens to be vigilant and called on them to protect their properties uh, and their possessions and their dignity. And at the same time, it was something we saw earlier today, some commanders of various tank units deployed across the city on their loudspeakers telling people, uh, you know, that they have to take care of themselves and fend for themselves. And it's something here in the heart of Cairo, the ambulance that have been driving around uh, have been saying on the loudspeakers to people, you know, saying things like, God be with you, stand strong, we will protect you, protect yourselves. So trying to really give people a sense of uh, awareness and alertness that this is happening across the city uh, and now across the country, apparently, if it's in Alexandria, uh, and calling on people to take matters into their own hands in ensuring their own safety and security. And of course, um, we've been hearing from people in different neighbourhoods uh, across, certainly Cairo, talking about their own uh, mini militias. It seems that what you were saying before, uh, um, Eamon, has become a reality. People have, t have to take the law into their own hands uh, just to protect themselves. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, you know, we're using the word militias, and perhaps militias is slightly uh, implying that they're very well armed or perhaps even strongly armed. In the case, it's not like that at all. What we're seeing is people breaking off whatever they can in terms of uh, wooden sticks, metal rods, knives. So very small arms, and it's usually like three or four.
four people, perhaps even slightly more, that are guarding each building or at the end of each street trying to prevent people from, uh, as we heard from that one eyewitness, driving into an area that they may not be familiar with. So it's really, uh, you know, these neighborhood watch committees that are popping up all across the city. Well, uh, Eamon, for the moment, thanks very much. Of course, those live pictures coming in from Alexandria of uh, suspected individuals thought of being some of the thugs or even those that escaped from the prisons uh, across uh, as uh, the social uh, chaos continues. These are live pictures now from Cairo, the 6th of October bridge. Such a different scene from 24 hours ago. Peace and quiet here during a curfew, a curfew that's not been observed by many people but continues for another six hours.